What is going on, guys? Mikey P here, and we are back with episode episode 13 of the D&M Show podcast. I'm joined by Dom once again. Hey, guys. And uh, last week was a pretty good week for the both of us, actually. I'm winning. Dom is winning by one game, so he did fall back from his two-game lead. But Dom went 12-4. and four. I went 13-3. and three. And that's pushing his record to 103 and 72, and my record to 102 and 73. So, without further ado, let's get into this week's picks. On Thursday night, we have Dallas at Minnesota, and I have Dallas just because. How can you pick against Dallas right now? You got Minnesota, who did handle Arizona a week or two ago, but Arizona isn't that good this year. You got Dallas, who. Offense is just on fire, and the defense is doing just enough to get by. So it's pretty easy to pick Dallas in this game. I'm going Dallas as well. They're the best team in the NFC. They will clinch the first playoff spot this week with a win, and like something else has to happen, but that's something else will probably happen. So simply, I'm just going to stick with Dallas. They're hot right now. Can't pick against them. We're going Dallas. Next up, we got Kansas City going to the Atlanta Falcons. I expect this to be a very good game, but I am going to go with the Atlanta Falcons. After they blew out the Arizona Cardinals last week, they are still looking like a top team in the NFC. And I just feel like Kansas City played like shit last week and got lucky against Denver. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick with the hotter team, and I'm going to go with Atlanta. Yeah, that's how I'm looking at it. Atlanta, Atlanta's offense is just way too hot for anyone to be able to do anything against it. I mean, they had, what was it, Benjamin or something like that? Who? The Falcons. They had, like, a receiver from the Browns. I think his name was Benjamin. Travis Benjamin plays for the Chargers. No, it was another Benjamin. I don't know. Maybe it was Gabriel. I don't I don't know. Whatever his name was, he they, they had, like, this no-name receiver put it in work on the Cardinals. They don't need just Julio to come out and produce. They, they have Sanu who they don't need to come out and just produce, you know. it's This offense is just on fire, and I don't see how the Chiefs, even though they are a good team, is going to be able to stop a top offense in the NFL. Next up, we got Miami at Baltimore, and I have Baltimore, and the reason I'm taking them is simply because Miami just escaped a game with the San Francisco 49ers. You can't expect to beat teams who actually can win when you're barely escaping teams that don't win. Joe Flacco's not elite, but he is a an average quarterback, you could say. You got Mike Wallace, who's actually putting in work down there. Perriman, who's not finally playing. Steve Smith, who, how the fuck is he still playing? And you got, you got the number one run defense on the other side. It's going to be hard for Miami to do anything against Baltimore. I'm as well going to Baltimore. I don't really like Baltimore this season, but I mean, like, they're doing well enough to win games. I don't feel like the Miami Dolphins really stand that much of a chance after that poor performance last week. You know they did get the W. It was a very bad performance. Against a very bad team. Yeah, so I'm going to go with the smarter pick, and I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens. Next up, we got the shit show of the week with the San Francisco 49ers going to play the Chicago Bears. And I'm going to go with the 49ers because they're the least shitty of the teams. I feel like they have a better chance of winning on the road than the Bears have winning at home. I feel like the Bears are just trying to get that first pick at this point. They're doing really bad, but I mean, like, clearly the Browns are going to get it. But, but yeah, 49ers, not a very confident pick, but it's the better of the two. That's how I'm looking at it. Chicago, the, what, what do they have going on for them? They're without their starting quarterback, who's garbage anyway. They're without their star receiver. Someone else on that team, I'm pretty sure, just got suspended too. Yeah, somebody. I, don't I don't remember who, but someone else. You look at the 49ers, and they were actually competing against a team that is fighting for a wild card spot right now. Well, I don't think either of these teams are really good. I think uh, San Fran has enough power offensively to get the W this week. Next up, we got the Philadelphia Eagles traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals, and I have feeling this one. Yeah, they had a poor performance against a I shouldn't say piss poor, but a poor Packers team. Pretty piss poor. But the receivers show that they actually can catch a ball. The offense is, isn't a deadly offense, but they, they can get the job done when needed sometimes. 
the big thing for me in this game is the defense. They're going up against a Cincinnati's offense that is without Giovanni Bernard and A.J. Green. So I think the defense is going to benefit from that a little bit. And all, all you really got to do is get some pressure on, on Dalton. He's bound to make some mistakes. That's why I have Philly. The Eagles fucking suck. Carson Wentz is the only good thing about that offense. That defense plays piss poor. I have no confidence in that Philadelphia Eagles team. Although the Cincinnati Bengals do struggle, I do feel like they can get a home win here this week. Next up, we got the Texans heading on the road to face the Green Bay Packers. And I got the Green Bay Packers coming off a very hot win against the Philadelphia Eagles on Monday Night Football. I don't feel like, I feel like Houston's finally like hitting their ceiling. They're not really doing much now this time of the year. And they're really just letting that division slip out of their hands. I feel like the Packers are going to get hot. And I feel like this is another win. They're going to have a two-game win streak. Yeah, you got to think by this point in the year that Houston's not really going to get any better. Especially with Brock Osweiler not being on the same page as DeAndre Hopkins. So without J.J. Watt, that's nothing new. So it's really hard for me to go with Houston this game. As you saw last week, uh, everyone was saying, oh man, Philly's going to win that game last week. They have a, a top five defense when they're at home. And Aaron Rodgers was the Aaron Rodgers that we were used to. And he actually was throwing pretty good dimes. He had uh, that back that back of the end zone pass to, to uh, Devontae Adams, which was a good catch by Adams to begin with too. But Aaron Rodgers looked like the real Aaron Rodgers that we're used to against Philly. I, I expect that to continue against a poor Houston Texans team. Next up, we got the Broncos traveling to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars. And what else do I have to say other than I see the Denver Broncos completely dominating this game? They got the defense that's just going to completely shut down that horrible Jacksonville's offense that can't seem to get shit going for them. And I expect this to probably be Trevor Simeon's best week of the season. He's going up against a pretty poor defense down there. I don't have anything positive to say about this game, so I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. I got the Broncos. The Jags are absolutely terrible. They're going to stay terrible. The Broncos are going to get back to their winning ways after a very upsetting loss last week. They're going to get the easy W this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And right after that game, we got another shit show. We got the L.A. Rams going up against the Patriots. And, I mean, Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, the Rams suck. And what else do you need? I got the Patriots winning this one for sure. Yeah, basically what Dom said, you you look at uh, Jared Goff and that Rams team, and Todd Gurley hasn't really gotten anything going until recently. Jared Goff did look good in the first, I don't even want to say first half, because I didn't watch the complete first half of that game, but for at least first quarter of that Saints game last week, I do think he has a chance of being that team's future. But going up against a New England team that seems always to be prepared for no matter who their opponent is, no matter the circumstances, I don't see how L.A. wins this one. Next up, we got Detroit at New Orleans, and this would probably be better, one of the better games this week. I agree. You got a top offense in, I shouldn't say a top, but you got a uh, a scary offense in New Orleans offense just because of Drew Brees, really. And then you got a well-rounded team in Detroit. The defense isn't anything spectacular, neither is that offense, but Matthew Stafford is playing really good. Golden Tate was having a pretty good year to begin it off when he slowed down a little bit. That team, Detroit's fighting for a playoff spot right now with five weeks left in the regular season. Every game counts, and I don't see them letting this one slip out of their hands. I also have Detroit, although New Orleans is playing some pretty good football recently. I just feel like Detroit's pretty much really hot right now. Even though they don't have that many star players on their team, they're doing well enough to get the job done. And I feel like, I mean, they trailed in every game in the fourth quarter, and they're 7-4. and four. So something's got to be right about that team, and I'm going to have them with the upset victory against New Orleans Saints. Next up, we got Buffalo going to the Raiders. Again, really not much to say about this game. <laughs> the Oakland Raiders are going to win this game. I have no confidence in the Buffalo Bills. I really don't see how the Raiders could lose this game. Derek Carr is playing MVP-like football. That defense is playing really good with Khalil Mack leading the squad. I feel like they're going to get an easy victory at home against the Buffalo Bills. My prediction of the Raiders winning, not winning, but making the playoffs, is going to be true. Oakland 
I think they're tied for the second best record in in the league with uh, New England. Oh, the Patriots only have one loss. No, they have two. No, they have two. Yeah, they have two. They're tied with New England for the best re- second best record. Oakland is looking like they have a hand on that con- that division out there in the West. I expect to continue against the Buffalo Bills team, who hasn't really been impressive this year. They have their moments, but Derek Carr, that offense is deadly, and that defense is fierce. Khalil Mack coming off the edge in any game is scary. I see Oakland winning this. Next up, we got Washington at Arizona, and let me be honest, the only reason I have Arizona in this game is because I don't want the Washington Redskins to win. So I'm going to try to pull some positives together for you here. Got the Arizona Cardinals, that if they get the pass, the deep pass game going, they become a lethal offense. Larry Fitzgerald, John Brown, Floyd, and then you got the best receiving running back in the league in David Johnson. You go to the defense, you got Patrick Peterson. I believe the Honey Badger comes back this week. Might have been last week. I'm not 100% sure, but Honey Badger should be back this week, I think. And you got... um. I believe they have a defense. I think uh, Chandler Jones is like top five for sacks right now or something like that. You got a defense that is well put together. They just need to all get on the same page, and I think that could happen against a Washington Redskins team. You like that? You, you like, like that? that? You, know you like that was so last year, bro, right? like that. I don't like that. Um, I feel like this is actually going to be a really good game. I did pick the Washington Redskins. I feel like... After that blowout by the Atlanta Falcons, I feel like it's going to take a week or two for the Cardinals to bounce back. Therefore, I have them dropping back-to-back games. I feel like Kirk Cousins is playing decent football. That team's playing all right this season. They're one of the top teams in that division. They're in front of the Eagles, at least. So I think that the Washington Redskins could pull, pull off a pretty nice upset this week against the Arizona Cardinals. Next up, we got the G-Men heading to Pittsburgh to take home the Steelers. And I got the G-Men winning this game. They played really good last week, and I'm not a big fan of the Steelers. For some reason, with that great offense, they still don't win games. I don't see – I could see how they win this game, but I don't think they're going to. I feel like the Giants offense is playing really well. If they could just get a run game. And that defense is surprisingly playing decent enough. Landon Collins actually knows how to cover some zones. And they've been playing really good football all year, so I'm going to go with the G-Men this week. Per usual, I'm going to hype up the G-Men because I'm a Giants fan. So Have fun. You ready? Got Landon Collins, bro. Defensive rook, or not defensive rook. Defensive player of the year candidate right now. You got the off. I, I clearly had the Giants. I never pick against them, but you got an offense that, like all season, they're slowly starting to find their identity. You know, they're they're either dumping it off to Odell, letting him do his thing on a five yard crossing route, or they're hitting Victor Cruz, who comes up with a nice catch thirty yards down the sideline. They're slowly getting their identity together. I, I'm really frustrated with the whole thing of how this is still the same offense, but they're producing a whole lot less than they were when Ben McAdoo was the offensive coordinator versus the coach. I don't really know what changed there, but it's a little frustrating. You get, but you got the defense who is seventh ranked in the NFL right now. Think of that. They were 32nd last year, and they jumped all the way to seventh. That's pretty incredible. You got Jason Pierre Paul, who just came, who's coming off of a. Uh, Defensive Player of the Week award, three sacks, a touchdown, and a forced fumble. You got OV on the other side who had two sacks, I believe. You got Landon Collins in the back. You got that secondary of uh, Jack Rabbit, Eli Apple. Should have been Apple turnover, but oh well. DRC, it's, it's just a deadly defense. If the defensive line can find a way to get to Pittsburgh, O-line and get to Ben and stop the run. I see this going the Giants' favor, but it could easily go to the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. Next up, we got Tampa Bay at San Diego, and I am very impressed with this Tampa Bay game, Tampa Bay team. They're only one game back on their division leaders in the Falcons, and they just held the Seahawks to five points. While they only scored 14, it was still against one of the better secondaries in the league, so I am still impressed, and I think they're going to go into San Diego and just dominate. I'm sorry to say it, Tom. I just think it's going to happen. Mike Evans is going to score me another 30 fantasy points this week. Well, I don't see that happening. But um, I have the San Diego Chargers winning this game. They're at home. 
Philip Rivers is balling. Joey Boza ballin'. is balling. Ballin'. That defense is surprisingly playing <laughs> very. <laughs> Take it easy, bro. You were just saying Joey Boza is shit. That's not true. Bro, no, you were saying <laughs> it, bro. You were hyping him up, then you said he was shit. Now you're hyping him up again? That's not true. Make, make up your mind. <laughs> anyway, anyway, after those false claimers, we get back to the point of that defense is playing very well this season. That offense, surprisingly, even with Keenan Allen hurt, is doing fantastic. The run game with Melvin Gordon is extremely impressive. I do have San Diego getting the win this week at home against Tampa Bay. Next up, we got Carolina going to Seattle, and I cannot pick Carolina this week. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks are extremely hard to beat at home, and I do not think that that Panthers team is capable of getting the win on the road at Seattle. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet here. Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks will get the win against my man Cam and the Panthers. Right, let me say this, bro. Playoff started today. Both teams that played in the Super Bowl last year would not be in the playoffs. Well, I don't give a fuck about either. Why do I care? <laughs> <laughs> My case being, Carolina's ass this year, so how can I go with them against a team that's winning their division? I'm pretty sure they're second in the NFC right now. How can I go How can I go against them? You got Russell Wilson with Thomas Rawls back. Doug Baldwin's having a year. And the defense, who might not have been as good as they were when they were going to the Super Bowl, but they're definitely still a top defense. Easy for me to pick Seattle. And the wrap week 13 up, we have the Indianapolis Colts taking on the New York Jets. And Andrew Luck is expected to play, so it's easy for me to say that I have the Colts winning this game. T.Y. will probably have like two touchdowns. Frank Gore will have a touchdown. Andrew Luck might even rush for one. Jets suck this year. Ryan Fitzpatrick was ass. Brandon Marshall is trying to have a year, but he really can't. And that defense is just piss poor. So, <laughs> Colts win. Mike said it all. Um, if Andrew Luck plays, I got the Colts. If Andrew Luck doesn't play, though, I got the Jets. Because I don't know about you, but I watched that game last week. And, and you were Yeah, I didn't watch it, but I saw, <laughs> I saw the highlights. I saw the highlights. And um, the Colts fucking suck without Andrew Luck. So I have no confidence with them without Andrew Luck. So my pick all depends on if Andrew Luck plays or not. So that will be a game time decision. But with him, they win. Without him, they get fucked up. Some real talk right here, though. Colt, the Colts franchise really sucks, if you think about it. Yeah, without Peyton Manning, they sucked. And then they're now without Andrew Luck, they suck. They're benefiting from having two top quarterbacks because they had first-round draft picks. Yep. Or first overall picks. Yep, because they suck. They're really wasting his prime, too. Suck. And that's going to wrap up the Week 13 edition of the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed we uh, pushed through this after doing a little hot sauce challenge. Look forward to that. But if you like the video, leave a like. Subscribe. Any ideas, comments, suggestions, or feedback, leave them in the comments area. And until next time, guys, peace!